welcome here to St. Christopher's as we come to mark the passing of Robert Cantwell. May you know him as Bobby. We will mark his passing and we will give thanksgiving for his life and look for the hope and the resurrection in Jesus Christ our Lord. We'll have a short service today up here with a few prayers and a few readings of scripture and then we're all invited to go back down to the parish hall. Let us begin. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never-failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our brother Bobby as into the hands of a faithful creator and most loving Savior. In your infinite goodness, wisdom, and power, Work in him the merciful purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I would now invite Bob's brother Rick to come forward to go here. First, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. And uh, here to celebrate the life of my brother. I'm going to share a passage from the Gospel of John in chapter 14. And it's Jesus talking to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you will be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Bobby. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and his friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us quiet confidence that we may continue our course in faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O merciful Father, you have taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve your children. Look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom our prayers are offered. Remember them, O Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of comfort, Deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with the Cantwell family in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I will now invite Brian to come forward and do a reading. So this is from the uh, book of Revelation, 21 verses 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. And he will wipe 
away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. <coughs> Most loving Father, whose will it is for us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on you who care for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal, and which you have manifested to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I will now invite Bridget to come forward. <coughs> all of you today. It's a celebration of life and um, few people celebrated and enjoyed life more than my brother Bob and he would be so honored to see all of you today and I'm, I'm truly celebrating the, the life of all of you. Um, I was very pleased. Do you have my prompt, please? Sorry? March earlier this year, there was a, a ceremony in Sudbury where many of the people local here in, um, in Canada were able to attend in his immediate family. So thank you for being here again. Um, a celebration of life is never an easy thing. Um, for that ceremony, I wrote a letter and I'm going to read that again uh, today. Um, but before I read that, I, I wanted to uh, share a quote uh, by a poet that, that Bobby loved very much, um, Maya Angelou. Um, Sometimes we'll choose a path in life and no matter how hard we try, things don't go the way we want. So Ma Maya Angelou once wrote, um, do your very best until you know better. And when you know better, do better. And I try to keep that quote present in my life, I think as he, as he did as well. Uh, so I just wanna share with you a, a letter I wrote. Dear Bobby in heaven, I'm glad we took the time to talk together a lot to explore philosophical questions and stay outside in McGregor Bay to look for a long, long time at the moonlit nights and dark, starry skies without an explanation for how beauty or nature works. I feel lucky to have known you and I will keep learning from you. You are unlike anyone I've ever known and I ache having to part with another sibling whose time here on earth was too short, but I will carry what was good with me close to my heart. You've been a protector to me and to so many others. It's up to each of us now to share the strength that you have given us to keep each other whole and healthy together. Good music was the backdrop of life, especially around you, and I'll never forget my visit to Orlando, Florida, when you lived in a tiny glass house, surrounded by all sides with lush tropical plants, including above the ceiling. We listened over and over again to a hit song at that time, Nicolette Larson's um, Gonna Take a Lot of Love, and her words keep coming back to me, especially during these recent months, which have been so difficult. Um, the chorus of that song says, it's going to take a lot of love to change the way things are. So you're a shooting star, Bob, whose light brightens our way. Thanks always for your honesty, and I'll see you on the other side. With love from your sister. <coughs> nice. 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 
The Cantwell family would like to invite anybody now who would like to say a few words or share a story or a memory to come forward. Uh, hi, I'm Randy Ernst. I met Bob, Rick, Yeager, right in this church. Thinking maybe in the late 60s. And I remember the first time I, I saw them was uh, I was standing out there waiting for the service to start and these guys come water skiing in. Mm -hmm. What is that? <laughs> There they were. They were water skiing in church because Big Bob had them in here at the service and was making sure. And I think we, uh, back in those days, we used to take turns reading, reading lessons and, and ushering and along with the end. Several of you have grown up in this church, and uh, Bob and Yeg and Rick have, have to me been people that no matter where I've gone in my life. When you come back to their life, you, they welcome you into their world with a smile and how, how are you doing, how can I help you? And that's, that's kind of what, what Bob was for me. He was a, uh, we shared a lot of music together also and he did, that was very nice. I know that Nicola loves him. <laughs> and then we evolved together in golf, but the whole thing that that, that stands out to me was once I became friends with the boys, they, they invited me to come out to their California home. And I dropped out of college. I was a 20 year old trying to figure out what I was going to do. And they opened their doors. And it opened an avenue for me to be able to do what I've done, which is stay in the golf field some one way or another. <laughs> but they are three boys that have made a difference in my life. And I, I miss Yay. I'll miss Bob dearly, and I'll, I'll, I will hold, hug and look, hold Rick as long as I can. I don't have anything planned. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that uh, the last two months have been really, really hard. Um, but what makes it, and I've never really realized how important just anything was, just a little, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter what you say, just to have a high, whatever, just really makes this time a little less awful. Um, and I know that I recognize, obviously, all of you, <laughs> and um, all of you were just so truly special to my dad, and this place was so special to him, and every time I come here, it, just, it feels like I'm coming home, and any time I come here, I feel him here. Um, and he just loved you all, everyone so much, and he was one of those people that you met. And he ignited something in people, and that spark is what people remember. And that's, when people talk about him, I see it in their eyes, and I think it's just really special, and I loved him more than anything, and I'll miss him dearly, but seeing you guys and all the love, like, means a lot. So, thank you for coming. Shannon, and my husband wasn't able to come this afternoon, but we worked all morning putting uh, remembrance together that he asked me to read for him today. So here we go. Our family has known Bob for 27 years, and over that period there are many events, characteristics, and attributes that come to mind that endear him to us. We remember Bob on a number of different levels, and I would like to list a few of them for you here today. We first encountered and observed Bob as a carpenter when he worked for Lloyd Linder in building additions to our then small cabin. And, some, 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 and he was responsible for the addition of the living room, lower rock room, as well as the docks, decks, closet, and shed. You might say that our place today is the place that Bob built. Every winter and spring, we would brainstorm projects 
to do just so we could have Bob over for the summer. <laughs> so, over the years, we were very impressed by the combination of his architectural vision and carpenter skills. He never used any blueprints but those in his head to which he would constantly refer and modify as work progressed. And at the close of each work day, he would survey the day's work, reviewing it slowly from his boat as he slowly headed home. You could see the wheels turning in his head. We never tired of the entertainment he provided. Once while working with his partner, Murray Still, on our living room, Bob looked down onto the water and noticed their boats, which were tied together, were floating away. <laughs> we actually have pictures of this. <laughs> and Bob observed the issue, kind of tilted his head, and calmly told Murray that from now on, it might be a good idea to tie the boats to something rather than to each other. <laughs> the boats were retrieved. In building our living room, one side faces east. Bob mentioned that it would be nice to have a stained glass window in the peak. Ironically, we just so happened to have a hundred-year-old stained glass window in storage from Gary's mother's childhood church, for which we had no purpose. Thus, it was Bob's idea to bring it up to McGregor Bay and we think of him often when we look at it. <clears throat> um, a little <coughs> side note before I continue. My daughter, Laura, kept in contact with Bob as he was dying in the hospital. And when he died, she wanted to do something to remember him. So to reflect and memorialize Bob's contributions to our lives in the Bay, our family has purchased a small plaque that reads as follows, Bob Cantwell, designer, builder, and friend. And we are planning on attaching this some, someplace on the cabin as a memorial to him. Mm -hmm. One final note, Bob had told us many stories